Dave Palumbo with RxMuscle.com. I'm here with Chris, the technician of CETO, and we're here at the 2016 Arnold Fitness Weekend, and uh, we're going to do a little preview of the Men's Open and the Men's 212 Division. Chris, Kai Green coming back after having uh, sat out the Arnold since 2010. Obviously, he missed this year's, or this past year's Olympia. Hasn't been on stage since 2014 when he dropped out of that Prague Pro Show uh, after prejudging. You said he would never compete again and would never be back on stage again. It looks like he might make it, although we haven't gotten to Saturday yet, so it's hard to see. Will Kai Green be at his best? Will Kai Green be average, or will he be a disappointment? Um, you know, my expectation is that he'll be the best the best that we've seen in three or four years. I don't think we're going back to 2009, um, so we're not going to see his best, but he'll bamboozle people that he's at his best because he is not under the pressure of having to, the very real pressure of having to go up against uh, Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. And we know when he goes up against Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath, you know, he implodes with the pressure. Or, you know, so you think he'll be a little more relaxed here? He'll be more relaxed, and, you know, it'll be like a New York Pro Show for him. Where, you know, if you look at some of the, his best looks, they've been at New York Pro Shows because he's not going up against the, you know, the, the very top or echelon. Are or they, are they good looks, or are they just better than everyone who's up there? No, I mean, well, that's part of the, the equation here. You know, it, he's going to have Here's the question. He's, he's Has Kai Green been his best since the 2010 no. uh, Australia no. Pro? No. No. And then part of that is age, and part of that is your waist gets wider over the, over the years. Um, that's not to say, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I would end it there, meaning, you know, I don't need to really add and qualify, is he, is he better? I don't think he's better. I think he will be better here because there's less actual pressure on him than going to the Olympia where people say for 10 months out of the year, what about Phil? What about Phil? You always say that when we don't see pictures of people, usually it's, it's a very bad sign. Yes. And we haven't seen anything from Kai. Well, Kai is the, the, the ultimate extrovert. You know, he's got a bigger than life personality. Um, he's an artist. Artists like to display their art. Um, you always see Kai expressing himself in these pictures leading up to a show, and we haven't seen him. I think that's not, you know, a good thing. And and you know, I, I just think that it, it, it's 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 foreshadowing something that we might see, you know, in prejudging. A Kai Green that's ninety seven percent, ninety five percent is best. Let me get my calculator. Is, is it enough to beat? the best Justin Compton out yes. there? Yes, it is. Uh, because, you know, you have to remember that Branch Warren beat Justin Compton last year. So, you know, if you really think think that through, close your eyes for a minute and picture Branch Warren's physique, and if that's capable of beating Justin Compton, of course, a 97%. It also, it also beat Cedric Greg Millen, which yeah, we might not agree that that should well, have been the case. Well, Arnold had a little something to say about that. Right. So, uh, you know, I mean, he, he quote, beat him, but, you know. Is was, it 95% Kai Green good enough to beat Cedric Greg Millen? Um, who just came off that win last week at the Kevin Lavroni Classic? I, th I think that I would typically say probably yes, but uh, I, I would answer that with, you know, Lineups matter. Who's in lineups matter. You know, you can revisit the Atlantic City, and the, the reason people say, wow, Cedric versus, you know, Branch, you know, it, it was different than this lineup last year. Me, so the point me, is this. When you put, if, if you make a call, and there's only two people, we've never seen only Branch, I mean, only Cedric stand next to only Cedric. We've never seen that ever. So we don't know. But what I can tell you is they have two dramatically different physiques. One guy's 6'3", the other guy's you know 5'8", looks shorter because he's wide-waisted. Right. Uh, one guy has incredible flow, one guy has incredible density. You know, it's, it's, they're just two total contrasts versus a, a mix of a lineup. Here's a, here's a better, let's qualify this better. Kai Green arguably could be Mr. Olympia right now, let's face it. Yes. He, he's lost by a point here and there. So we're basically taking Mr. Olympia and we're putting him into this lineup. How does Mr. Olympia do with the Arnold Classic lineup the with, the guy, with guys who've never really been top three? Yeah, I think aside that's, from Branch Warner. Is I think that's the best, the best argument or the best case or the best Mr. Spin. Olympia wins every time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, let's not kid ourselves. We, we like to, and I do, like to critique uh, the hell out of people like Kai Green, and that's because we have such enormous expectations for him that it, 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 
that's what when you were looking for a, well, the you best, and I, you and I might for the best bodybuilder in a right. show like this. It demands that you are extra critical on him. Versus, mm -hmm. who do we expect to be right. 19th? You know, we'll be less critical well, of him you, because we expect him to be 19th. You and I might not think that Kai looks that great tomorrow, but he'll still he might still win because he's still the best bodybuilder on stage. Is what is is the point we're making? Yes. Here. Yeah. I mean, and you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's got a lot of muscle per square inch. He's got a lot of shots that are very dominant. Um, you know, he's got great stage presence. Um, you know, he doesn't have Phil in the lineup to get into his head. Right. Um, and I think all of those are going to be factors that are going to weigh heavily, you know, to make him the strong favorite. Will Compton be better than he was last year? Um, he'll be different, that's for sure. I don't know what, how, what better is. I, I think Sometimes bigger is not better. That's why I mean. You know, I, I don't know what better is. Um, you know, because people, you have to remember, you know, people... Uh, you know, people with a little bit of, you know, brain power have discussed how Justin looked at, like, the Orlando, which was a smaller version, but peeled out of his mind with a crazy small waist mm. versus much bigger last year. With a little bit of blow to the waist. With a little bit of blow, with a little bit less separation. I mean, argue, you know, the, the, the purist would, you know, most people would just say, yeah, the bigger version is better. Um, and that's probably true, but it wasn't like radically better, even though he had gained a lot of mass. So gaining a lot more mass, does that help? I mean, it helps, but is it radically better? You know, you won't know until you see him. I think Justin Compton is going to be the most dangerous guy in the lineup, only because he's young, he's got young muscle, he's still growing and improving, and I think that he adds a little excitement to this lineup because he is an unknown factor. Cedric McMillan came off this win last week at that uh, Kevin Lavroni Classic that was in Poland. He beat Branch Warren. He beat Josh Lornarnowitz. Um, arguably, you're telling me he's better now than he yeah, was better. at the show. Um, he might be the only guy in this lineup who can push Kai in terms of size, structure, flow. You know, they're probably the two best posers in the lineup as well. Yeah. I would love to see although, a two-man call although, out. Although Cedric on your show had falsely conceded that he I was better. better. Yeah, yeah, the best in the world. Because he wanted the low expectations for his routine. Yes, he was getting nervous, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I, I, it remains to be seen, but I, you know, I'd have to say, you know, I know what Cedric looks like. And Cedric claims he has no momentum. He doesn't believe in no momentum. No, he also told well, me he that. He made a good show. point, a good argument on yeah. that, um, and I, and I believe him. You know, I, I, I agree with that point. But w what I can tell you, you know, I think, uh, you know, running into this show, this is the most relaxed. I really don't genuinely care, although he wants to place high or win mm -hmm. you know I, I'm, I'm comfortable with my physique for this show and, and that lowers Cedric's level of internal stress which I think re will be reflected in his physique just like with Kai that you know he doesn't have to go up against Phil Cedric is no longer going up against you know like this right. I have to be number one sure sure Branch Warren obviously you know last week relegated to third place that's got to be hurtful to him seeing that he beat Cedric last year uh, Josh Lenardowitz coming out of nowhere he's a guy who could be dangerous in this yep. lineup yep. I don't think you know I kind of put Lenardowitz in the Justin Compton category because he's new muscle yeah. a lot of size good conditioning but I think Compton's better uh, yeah. I think one of the wild cards in this lineup has to be Juan Morel though okay. uh, I saw Juan at Bev Francis powerhouse gym the other day a lot of new muscle he's always shredded hard this guy can certainly shake these guys up. He's 270 pounds right now. Yeah, you know what? I, I think what helps really Juan in the lineup is Cedric in the lineup. Height and V taper. Right. Um, and there's something to be said. I, that's not going to negate in any way the wacky craziness of Kai Green. But it's a different type of per for a, a call of uh, uh, Juan, uh, Cedric, and, and someone else. Let's say it's it's Compton. Compton's a shorter bodybuilder. Those guys have more width. Um, he has, you know, Compton's got more compact size. But it it it, it draws your eye and, and draws contrast, which we've never seen in other shows. You know, it's an interesting lineup. You know, it's a very interesting lineup. And 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 I so I, I think Juan's height is going to help him. And I don't mean that like like he's lankier by any means. But his height and his width. And, and his fullness to the front is going to help him, um, you know, in this lineup in particular. How do you think uh, the freshman sensation Cody Montgomery is going to do in this lineup? First pro show, kid wins three teen nationals. Yeah. He goes right on to the USA Championships, wins that. Goes right to the Arnold Classic for his first pro debut. Uh, obviously, you're working with him. Where do you think he'll fall in this lineup? You know, I have no idea where he's going to fall in the lineup. I think he has no idea where he's going to fall in the lineup. I think he's hoping for... 
you know, a judge to give him a call. And I think when he gets in a call, we're going to say like, wow, he's a lot better than my or his or, you know, than whoever ours is, our expectations, people's expectations. He's, he's very, very, very dense. He certainly added like, you know, three, four pounds of real, like, concrete hard muscle since since the USA. Um, his stress level on a scale of one to ten, it doesn't register. He's 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 focused on simply I wanna look really good. He doesn't have any grand illusion There's of no pressure on him. He has no pressure on him. Um, and you know, that can't be said for a lot of competitors. Um, and and I think that will also reflect in his physique. He he just wants to be at his best, and he he'll be happy where you know he's he places. Let's talk about Evan Santapani, who uh, you know arguably in these Arnold lineups usually is a top five guy all the time. You know, he's a guy that comes in in shape. He always exploits and takes advantage of people that maybe should beat him, yes. but he beats them because of his conditioning. He's got a lot of wow, and and the, obviously the, the the back shots, the arm shots are very impressive. He's got the good front quads. Um, how does Evan do in this lineup? Because this is a lineup where if everyone's in shape, Evan's in trouble. If everyone's but if, in shape. But if people are not, which is usually the case, he moves Evan up. moves well, yeah. up. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to come down to four. It's, it, it comes down to what is the level of condition of other people, because we know Evan's going to be in great condition, and how his legs, you know, stack up against people who are in the lineup. Not taking anything against uh, Juan Morel, but his leg's a little bit on the weaker side as well because of the crazy upper body. But Evan has also a crazy upper body with... But Juan's you know, got those more. thick legs from the side and from the back. He's got the glutes. Evan doesn't really have big glutes. Yeah. Speaking of leg issues, Max Charles, who was on my plane, I don't know how he fit in the seats, to be honest with you, but Max has got, you know, one of the best upper bodies in the lineup. You know, Ronnie Coleman-esque, dare I say, but he's also got the leg issues. Who's got better legs, uh, Max or Evan, you think? Um, I, it, it, I, I think at this point, possibly... Max, because I know, you know, I, I know what he, I've seen pictures of him at least, and yeah. his legs have improved, they've continually improved. Um, Can he be a top five guy here? He could be a dark horse here, yes, he could be a real dark horse here, you know, it just how he looks under the lights. I know in certain shots he's going to be like, have a lot of crazy freak factor, and he's definitely going to be, I think, improved in key areas, which is the legs around her. Um, they got more separation. The glutes and hams are, you know, mm. tight enough where you say, wow, his glutes and hams are really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's improved. He's improved. So he won a show last year. You know, uh, you know, he was in a, he had some decent calls in the Olympia. You know, he, he, he could be in the mix. Tough, tough lineup here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. We're going to have uh, Evan Santapani squaring off against, you know, Max Charles squaring off against Johnny Jackson squaring off against Branch Warren, Josh Lenardowitz. Cedric McMillan, Kai Green, uh, Juan Morrell. I mean, this is, you want to make a top it's, five? It's I don't think I can make a top five here. I, I, Give me your top five. Um, since you can't, I, I would say in no order. Let's although, try to figure it out together. Kai is going to, for sure, Cedric for sure. I think Josh for sure. But what's Compton. It? Oh, shit. Compton, I forgot about Compton. And then now I'm Is I'm, your top three uh, Kai, uh, Cedric, I, I, and Compton? I think that's the top three. I think you got to consider. I think you got to throw Juan Morel in there as the top four because I, I think those four guys can 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 be spinned around. Well, you know, it, it's it's to me if 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 it, it's it, I feel like I'm insulting Juan if I leave him out of the top three. I think he's dangerous. I think the bottom line is, and the expectation is they're going to judge him what they see, and I don't think unless it's just very clear this guy's the best, this guy's the second best, this guy's the third best. I think we're going to see like the weird callouts where people go like, "Wow, yeah, uh oh, yeah. so and so just yeah. moved down three spots." Where we at the beginning of the prejudge, I'll make, got, I'll make one prediction. If Kai Green loses this show, he's got to look terrible on that stage, and I, and I can't imagine that happening. So, if you're going to be a betting man, and we're not betting men, I would bet with Kai Green. Uh, we'll find out. Saturday morning when we see him at the pre-judging. Stay tuned for all our coverage. Don't forget to miss, uh, catch the live stream on digitalmuscle.com. I'll be doing some commentary there. Chris will be doing the live play-by-play -play on rxmuscle.com's forums. For now, I'm Dave Palumbo with Chris, the technician, Aceto, rxmuscle.com.